Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm a bit behind on video making because I've been very busy, so that's why the one for the Rip and Rally hasn't appeared yet. Um, but I'm taking a little bit of time out, my very busy schedule, because it's actually quiet this morning, which is quite a surprise for Friday morning. And I'm going to um, uh, swap over the power supply for the MB7 UCG iGate, because at the, the moment it's been running off... Uh, an ATX power supply and there's an absolute tangle of wires behind there which is not actually ideal so when I was at the Rip and Rally I as you will find out anyway I bought a Bremi power supply CB power supply quite good quality usually uh, will need but it yes it does need its capacitors doing as far as I'm concerned it works but I think as a precaution change all the capacitors inside so as a temporary stopgap measure I've got my old Maplin CB power supply, which is slightly higher current, but obviously it's never going to get anywhere near even the three amps. I think, the, yeah, it's three amps of the Bremi. You had to think about that there, and certainly won't get anywhere near the five amps. Continue uh, fifty percent, I think, on that one. Uh, it's uh, actually was it seven amps, fifty percent? I can't remember. It's a seven amp power supply. I can't remember without looking it, but. It's never going to get anywhere near those currents anyway, because that thing's only going to be transmitting around about 5 watts, uh, it claims. And the coax going out to the antenna is not the best anyway for that job. So, But it but it does the job. It does what I want it to do. It transmits and receives, because the radio is sensitive as hell and is not known for its front-end filtering. It does actually need a filter on it at some point. But it seems to work fine as an APRSI gate. So... In order to connect it up, because this radio's got Anderson power pole connectors on it, I'm having to use this little adapter. Let's bring it into shop for you so you can see that. Uh, if it'll focus on that, I'm not sure it will. There we go. We've got on one end of that Anderson power pole connectors, on the other end some ring terminals. I used to use this with a Soto Beams Fuser 6 until I stopped using that device. I actually seem to have misplaced that, which is a bit bizarre. There are other things in here that do have Anderson power pole connectors on, so I might need to make a few of these, more of these tails up as well. And this is using wire I got from Halfords, uh, which is why on the negative side it's a brown wire, which is probably a wee bit naughty, but I'll gloss over that. As the red, the red one's still positive, <laughs> so that's fine. So what I'm doing also is to have a look at the difference between the current consumption between both the power supplies. I'll be bringing the other one in in a minute. So I'm just going to lean over. And I'm going to show you this, Ooh. without losing my energy monitor for my smart meter, which I really don't like, on the floor. So, we have here a flickery hoppy meter. If you're a regular to Big Clive's channel, you'll recognise this meter. It's the same meter, basically, except I took the speaker terminals off it because I thought, nah, I don't want those. So, at the moment, that's uh, the eye gate on receive. Uh, it peaked to 220 milliamps on transmit. Let's see if it'll go into transmit. It might not do. Sometimes it might not transmit for a little while because I do have it set so it doesn't transmit packets every single time. I just have it set to limit, which is probably a good thing. But it's there and it and it works. So when it does go into transmit, if it goes into transmit, it does peak around about 220, 220 milliamps. So... That's pretty much the readings I'm getting from it. Surprisingly, the voltage here is 239 volts. So, normally it's about 236. That's actually all right. So, <laughs> but we'll gloss over that little fact. It's the current on the main side I'm looking at because obviously I don't want something that's gonna, gonna pull far too much. So that power supply is drawing about 25, 25 watts with that radio. So, if I just quickly turn the radio off and back on again, we'll see what happens there. Just got it to transmit, and I can tell you it's just got to 200. Right, so I'm just going to temporarily turn the radio off, if it'll let me, because I can't remember if I locked the power button or not. No, it has let me. And with the radio off, that power supply is still pulling current. Which isn't exactly ideal. 
So if the fuse was to blow in the radio, current would still be being pulled by the power supply. A linear one, I don't believe, would do that because that is a switch mode power supply and that's just gone to 211 when it milliamps when it transmitted. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of that out because it's an absolute mess of wires and everything else. It's not going to take me very long to do that. And we'll swap in the Maplin power supply. Okay, so I've swapped it all over. The radio is receiving. Unfortunately, during all of that, the Raspberry Pi rebooted. No, I didn't spot that until I saw it going through its reboot stage. So, you know, so now I'm going to have to sort that out to get it going again. And I've already noticed there is a significant improvement. So, 12, 12 watts is what we're getting here and 173 milliamps with the radio on receive and its backlight on. So, what I'm doing behind the camera is I'm just trying to connect to, to yep, yeah, ask me if I want to reconnect, connect to the, the Pi, because it did disconnect and from the network and everything, so. That's not ideal. So I do that first just to check. Yep. Okay. And try again. Oh no. Something went wrong. some reason it didn't give me the right screen over here For some reason oh it has it has done what i wanted it to do though so it is actually now running just try not to wallop the camera there so now i've just got to wait for it to um uh, transmit something for me So it went up to 239 milliamps on transmit, but it's now sat down at 173 milliamps on transmit. About 34 watts before dropping down to 11. So it's a wee bit better on the receive side of things, but it's pulling a bit on transmit, but that's to be expected. But when I turn off the power to the radio, as a quick test, that should and it's still pulling a little bit of current, perhaps this radio's standby is that standby current 169 milliamps of the radio off, which is a bit interesting but with the radio completely disconnected, that power supply is not going to pull anything theoretically or it's less noisy as well because there isn't a fan in it. It's just a it's just a regular it's just a regulated power supply. So I'll show you on the flickery hoppy. The readings are this time. I've just got to be careful because my FT2D is charging there and I don't want to knock it onto the floor. So that's uh, the readings now. And that's now just gone up to about peaked at 230, sitting down at 173 when it's receiving. And uh, ConnectBot keeps ki keeps uh, kicking itself off, which is a bit weird. I don't know why it keeps doing that. So, 
It's actually a bit worse on receive as it turns out from my notes, not better. So it's but it's a better power supply for the job and it can it's 13.8 volts rather than 12, so it's more designed for the radio than the supply I was using. And the fan was bearings are going in that power supply, so thought better get rid of it because it's just going to be annoying. Especially if I have guests over because they'd have to sleep on the sofa because I don't actually have a guest bedroom. So that's it all done now. So, so 174 milliamps. Stand by and receive on this one. Uh, it's, I managed to knock myself off the window I'm supposed to be looking at. There must be a bug in ConnectBot as well because it kept disconnecting while I was in there. So I'm just taking my notes. So these are my notes here on my phone. As you can see, if it'll let me focus. There we go. I prefer these linear transformer based power supplies over the switch mode ones anyway, I always have. Because they're less noisy electrically and in general because the switch modes all have fans in them. So there you go. So I'll just finish off my notes and that'll be it. And then we'll check it with a Bremi at a later date once I've actually got the capacitors changed in that. There we go, just f finishing my notes now. So this one's a bit worse on the current draw, but it's not anything really to write home about because it'll spend probably more time in receive than it does in transmit anyway. Oh, and that's that's call of work. So <laughs> let's focus back on the power supply. And yep, yeah, so that's the switching over of the power supply. I'm now going to unplug it from the flickery hoppy. I'm gonna just call it that because you know <laughs> that's its trademark, it flickers. Well. Trademark according to Big Clive, anyway. <laughs> so, I'll catch you in the next video. 7-3 for now, guys.